Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and this is some pretty cool news. I'm actually really, really, really happy about this. Uh, Colin Trevorrow is being brought back into the Universal team to write and direct Jurassic World 3. Now, of course, this makes the most sense to me, to be honest with you, right? After the whole shakeup with him on episode nine, uh, probably having a bit to do with the whole Book of Henry collapsing and as well as possible plot uh, development problems with Kathleen Kennedy over where he wanted to take episode nine because Ryan Johnson is just a hack. But <laughs> what we're learning today is that he is coming back. Uh, he will be writing and directing, and this is coming from Steven Spielberg himself. And so right now, Spielberg's feeling pretty hot. Ready Player One just dropped in theaters two days ago. It's an awesome, amazing, great movie. I, I, I highly recommend it. But uh, when Spielberg at this point now, if he's coming back into his more fantasy roots, and he's going to be you know personally involved with this particular movie, I, I am I'm hyped. And if he is bringing Trevorrow back into the fold, then I am sufficient sufficiently hyped for this one because let's think about it like this jurassic world um is a fun movie is it the best movie ever made no is it got problems absolutely you know trevorrow coming off of uh you know independent movies moving into doing this gigantic big budget blockbuster that is a reboot of a franchise long thought dead uh came out swinging grossed 1.6 billion dollars worldwide i mean it was a phenomenon. It, it, you, it, 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 you, it usurped Avengers Age of Ultron in 2015 uh, in terms of top grossing, you know, and that was a big move. That's a big, big, big move. One of the reasons why they probably wanted to bring him in for Star Wars Episode Nine. And then when that whole thing fell through and then JJ came back in, it probably just made more sense in order to bring in Colin Trevorrow as the writer and director. Now, Spielberg, I'm hoping, is going to be hands-on this time around. And I, I think he will be quite a bit. But it's it's not just going to be Trevorrow by himself. Now, this is what I find to be super interesting. What you have is the script is going to be rewritten by Emily Carmichael based on uh, a draft or an outline that was written by Colin Trevorrow and his co-writer, or his writing partner. Now, Colin Trevorrow and Emily Carmichael are going to work on this movie. And if you don't know who Emily Carmichael is, I would say pay close, pay close attention to her for in the future because she's done a couple small projects, but her last big one is making a splash, and that is Pacific Rim Uprising. She is a writer on that movie, and while that probably doesn't you know blow a lot of your skirts up, it, it does it does for me actually because what this tells me is that this girl can handle. Uh, these types of big budget tent poles, right? That they're bringing her in off of that. So you know, by the way, Pacific Rim Uprising is a Universal Legendary uh, collab. Jurassic World is a universal movie. They're keeping her in the universal family, which means that Universal sees something in her that they want to keep around. They, they see something in her that they want to keep close to their chest. So they're going to bring her in to work on these type of projects. And I haven't seen Pacific Rim Uprising yet, but I've heard pretty much nothing but good things about it. And part of that was the story. So her coming in, working with Trevorrow underneath Steven Spielberg's I don't know what I'm saying, tutelage, but definitely an observational eye. I, I think we're going to get something special out of Jurassic World 3. Now, that being said, I don't quite know what the hell the story is going to be. I don't know what J.A. Boyega is going to be bringing us uh, or what uh, I, I screwed up his name. But the guy directing uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I don't know where that's taking us. Um, but it looks like it's going to be big, crazy, and a lot of fun. And I think bringing the the key team from Jurassic World back together in order to, to finish out this trilogy is going to make it a, a pretty grand film. And so I, I'm on board with this one. I'm on board with this. I want to see what Trevor Rowe does. Um, Trevor Rowe, okay, Trevor Rowe is, is a type of director that ultimately in these big budget movies can craft the vision that, that works. But when it comes to the narrative aspect, uh, he might need his hand held a little bit, right? And so I think that's what Spielberg's going to do. I think Spielberg helped guide him and helped teach him uh, for the first movie. And then he went off from that because Universal gave him a vanity project because, you know, 1.6 billion. And they gave him Book of Henry, which they basically left him his own devices. And that movie was just, a, from what I understand, a narrative mess. And so bringing him back in and giving him more support and, and guidance in that regard, I think will will net us a better return as not only Jurassic Park fans, but moviegoers in general. And this is something I ultimately want uh, Lucasfilm to pay attention to, because I want you guys to look at uh, everything involving Ryan Johnson in the future and go, this is how you do it. You have a person who is a competent director, 
right? But have, have, have an overseer that comes in and helps guide the project where it needs to get to. Because movies are not made in a vacuum. Movies are not made by a single entity. You need someone there who will guide the project through to its finish. And if this is Steven Spielberg and he did well with Jurassic World, uh, I'm on board for what's coming next. And I just hope that other studios that are looking to expand out into these kind of huge big budget movies and these kind of mega franchises with, you know, these huge tent poles, which is, you know, obviously what they want, that they look to see what does well. They look to see uh, how things go. Like look at, for example, I'm just going to use this as a weird example, but look at uh, Vin Diesel and Fast and Furious. Now you're probably going, Matt, what the hell are you talking about? Well, here's what I'm talking about is Vin Diesel is a huge, and I mean a huge Dungeons and Dragons fan. He loves world building. Watch the first half of Riddick. The first half of Riddick is nothing but world building. And that's what he's good at. So then take that idea and put that into what they've done with the Fast and Furious franchise from number four to number eight now, and where they're taking it for number nine and number 10 to wrap up the series. It's created a world. It filled it with characters, characters that you like, characters that you care about, characters that you want to see continue. And because the dynamic is there and you have ultimately a guiding hand that's really helped establish the building of the world process here and not jumped from one director and producing team to another to another to another to another to make it kind of disheveled like what Star Wars did. Uh, what they've done now essentially is they've crafted this mega franchise where it's a billion dollars pretty much guaranteed for a franchise that started off in 2001 as just a basically street racing reboot of Point Break. So that whole detour was to sit, sit there and tell you that th this is going to be in good hands. Now, you could agree and you could disagree, and I'm totally down with either one. I want you to tell me about it. Comment below. So as, <laughs> as always, my name, of course, is Matt Jarbo. This is 3 Black Theater. Please thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, and check back often for more content from me. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.